At isang mapagpalang linggo po sa ating lahat. It's nice to see you once again and to fellowship with one another, especially in the temple of God and in the spirit ngayon. And so we welcome everyone online, on-site. We welcome you, even our first-timers. If it's your first time, we believe that every Sunday we have new people. And nakikita ko po every time I, I look at our Facebook page, I see new names in, in Facebook na nagla-like, nag-share, and they were really watching with us live. And so I really know that you know, new people, new, new families are joining us every Sunday. Kaya naman, we just want to welcome you. And this is 601 Bread of Life, Manila. And we pray that we, someday we can come together and see you. But today, habang online pa lang po tayo, we welcome you in the spirit. Amen. And so ngayong araw na ito, we will continue to study in the book of Joshua. Because I believe that God is bringing us into this new season sa ating buhay. And so last week, we talked about we are who? We are the Joshua generation. It's not because we are young. <laughs> because Joshua is actually very old when he led the people of Israel going to the promised land. But it is, we are called the Joshua because of our relationship to God, because God has called us, because of how we follow God. And I believe that God is calling the Joshua generation, our generation today, to be like Joshua. To be able to respond to God, be able to follow and obey God. And last week we learned that how can we become Joshua generation? We have to rise up. We need to arise and take the call. And we need to be courageous. We need to be bold. And for us to be able to lead. Okay? Ang Joshua generation, hindi lang siya basta-basta. You know, we just you know, have to follow. But we have to lead. And that is our call as the Joshua generation today. And nakita po natin how the Lord called Joshua. Joshua is an, is an ar army guy. Siya po ay isang trained in battle. He has been leading, he has been part of the army ng Israel. But when God called him, nakita po natin in chapter 1 how God encouraged Joshua. Sabi po niya, now, Joshua, you know, my Moses, my Moses, my aid, is now dead. Now it's your time. You need to rise up and lead the people. Okay? At pero hindi lang to isang besa sinabi ng Panginoon. Sabi ng Panginoon, you need to take courage. You need to be bold. Be strong and be courageous. Not just once but thrice. Bakit kaya sinabi ng Panginoon yun? I believe God sees the fear in the heart of Joshua. Okay? Joshua is fearful. Though he was an, an, a, a trained man, makita mo na the vision was so huge for him to take on. Okay? Yung, yung, yung kanaan na dadalhan ng Panginoon sa kanila is a place of milk and honey, but it's a very big place. It's a place of the giants. At maging doon po ay kailangan po niya when he has to lead the people, no more Moses. Wala nang Moses na magbabak up sa kanya. He is the one leading the people and he was, I believe it's a big task, it's a big land to possess and no the worst thing is that he has to lead these stiff-necked people. Kung si Moses nga eh, and a man na malapit sa puso ng Painon, he was not able to bring them in the promised land. Paano na lang po si Joshua? Yeah? So God sees, God sees the fear in the heart of Joshua. Kaya naman three times in Joshua chapter 1, God encouraged him, be strong and be courageous. And Joshua did respond. How do we respond in such a call sa Panginoon? That is our topic today. Follow God and see His salvation. And sometimes we say, Oh Lord, I will follow you. Oh Lord, I believe in you. But what's next? What's next? After the conversation ni Joshua, sabi ni Mika kanina, we need to take an action. There is an action God requires from us. And let's see how Joshua responds 
dun po sa calling niya to lead the people of Israel in the promised land. So verse 1 in chapter 2, dito po natin makikita, Then Joshua, son of Nun, secretly said to his spies from Shittim, Go look over the land, he said, especially Jericho. So they went and entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there. Okay, so after po ni Joshua na receive yung call sa Panginoon, he sent two, two spies. Agad-agad, okay. He sent the two spies dun po sa place ng Jericho. And Jericho is the very first city. It is a very, um, in, in the his history, it is actually the strongest city in Canaan. It is the most fortified it is the it has the highest wall it it's kasi makita mo na yung yung siya po yung entrance going to Canaan so that's why they really fortified this city now let us continue to read so let us open our bibles in Joshua chapter 2 Joshua chapter 2 the whole chapter of Joshua chapter 2. And today, let's just read the word like uh, how we read when we were young. The excited with the imagination. Put yourselves in the story. Say, for example, you are the spy or you are Rahab. So let us together journey in Joshua chapter 2. Sabi po dito, Then Joshua, son of Nun, secretly sent two spies from Shittim, Go look over the land, he said, especially Jericho. So they went and entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there. The king of Jericho was told, Look, some of the Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent this message to Rahab. Bring out the men who came to you and entered your house because they have to come to spy out the whole land. But a woman had taken the two men and hidden them. She said, Yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they had come from. At dusk, when it was time to close the city gate, they left. I don't know which way they went. Go after them quickly. You may catch up with them. But she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them under the stalks of flax she had laid out on the roof. So the men set out in pursuit of the spies on the road that leads to the forts of the Jordan. And as soon as the pursuers had gone out, the gate was shut. Before the spies lay down for the night, she went up on the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear of you has fallen on us, so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. And see, and what you did to Sihon and Og, the two kings of the Amorites is of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear, and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on the earth below. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and mother and my brothers and sisters and all who belong to them and that you will save us from death. Our lives for your lives, the men assured her, if you don't tell what we are doing, we will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us the lamb. So she let them down by a rope through the window, for the house she lived in was part of the city wall. She said to them, Go to the hills of the pursuers, so the pursuers will not find you. Hide yourselves there three days until they return, and then go on your way. Now the men had said to her, This oath you made us swear will not be binding on us, unless when we enter the land you have tied this scarlet cord in the window, through which you let us down, and unless you have brought your father and mother, your brothers and all your family into your house, if any of them go outside your house into the street, their blood will be on their own heads. We will not be responsible. As for those who are in the house with you, their blood will be on our head if a hand is laid on them. But if you tell what we are doing, we will be released from the oath you made us swear. Agreed. She replied, Let it be as you say. So she sent them away, and they departed, and she tied the scarlet cord in the window. When they left, they went into the hills and stayed there three days. 
until the pursuers had searched all along the road and returned without finding them. Then the two men started back. They went down out of the hills, forded the river, and came to Joshua, son of Nun, and told him everything that had happened to them. They said to Joshua, The Lord has surely given the whole land into our hands. All the people are melting in fear because of us. Now, this is one of the greatest story of salvation, especially sa mga anak ng Painoon during that time. They were brought and they were led into a foreign land. And so Joshua, receiving the word of God, even in fear, he followed God. He obeyed the word of God. Okay? Kaya po nagpadala siya ng spies. Many think that he is like Moses. He is not trusting the word of God. That's why he has to bring the spies out. But actually, he brought the spies so that he will know how to enter into the place. So kung makikita po natin, he brought two spies, not 12 people. And he secretly sent them. It was not actually is not actually a spy that is called by the people for them to see kung talagang ang tinatawag sila ng Painoon doon. But the spy was sent by Joshua himself. As a man, as a military man, he has to see what's going on in the place, how could they enter into the, the place. So he boldly sent two spies and responded to the call and to the word ng Painon to go and lead the Israelites to the Jordan. And you will see first point how we need to respond in God's word. When we receive something to God, we need to first is follow God, persist to follow God. Now, marami pong mga times we are called by God in many ways na sometimes po makita natin na it's out of our league, it's out of our ability but you know, sometimes God will take you out from your comfort zone. But how will we respond? We need to persist to follow Him. Joshua, trust God. Joshua, trust God. Kahit feeling po niya, wala na si Moses. Feeling niya, ito mga taong to, paano ko na lang sila ililid? But he followed the word of God. And also we see not just Joshua's courage here, but we see the obedience ng dalawang spy. Pag kayo pong spy na yun, alam mo, 40 years ago, the Lord sent, the, the people sent 12 spies to spy out the land. This time, nung time nyo, dalawa na lang kayo. It's not easy. It's not easy to follow. Imagine you, you are entering in a place that is new to you, is a place na kung saan giants ang matatagpuan mo dun. And that is how the people are being described. They were like grasshopper. And as the spy, you heard the stories. Alam mo, lalo sa Pilipinas, matindi ang chismis sa atin, di ba? Alam natin yung kauna-unahang napangyayari sa pamilya natin. And you would know, the two spies, I believe, they knew about the story in the beginning. The 12 spies, they were very fearful. They were not able to enter the land because they were very fearful because they think they are grasshoppers. So hearing these stories, you would be Lose, you will lose your heart, yeah? You'll be disheartened. But look at the courage ng dalawang spy. They persist to follow even if they are outnumbered. Kahit dadalawa lang sila. And you see, dito, they really trust their leader, Joshua. Because why? The leader also trusts God. The leader followed God. Followed the word of God. And this is the first point. As they spy out the land, they had the heart for the word ng Panginoon. They really embraced yung command ng Panginoon sa kanila. It doesn't matter if they were not that trained. Wala na yung mga elders nila to lead them. Wala na po yung mga unang taong nakareceive ng call. But now they have to continue something that has not been rich. That it's not been uh, ang tawag dito, hindi na po na, nagawa ng kanilang mga magulang. And there's a heavy burden on their shoulder. But they followed God. They followed God even in this uncertain place. Even in this place na matindi po yung kanilang kakaharapin with the walls. And the thing is, you see these two spies, before everyone crossed over, 
these two spies were the first ones. They even crossed over the Jordan River before Joshua. Look at how. Look at how. Yung, yung courage nila. How they followed God. Bakit hindi na lang ikaw leader? Usually, we, we will be like that. Yeah? Ikaw na lang. Tingnan namin pag na, na-cross ba yung Jordan. And when they crossed the Jordan River, you see how much struggle they would have to experience and go through. I don't think na gumamit sila ng bangka. I don't know. Pag kayo ba? Kasi nanonood ako ng mga SWAT. Yung mga panood sa SWAT, they have to swim. They have, you know, dapat hindi po sila makita. So this is how you would imagine you have to put yourselves in the story for us to understand and more appreciate the word. They persist. They persist. Seeing what lies ahead of them. Only two of them going to this Jericho. But they persist. And as they persist, you know, when we respond to the Word of God, hindi po ibig sabihin doon ay hi, hi, hi na lahat. When we became full-time, it's not, hindi ibig sabihin doon, okay na lahat. We, everything is well. But you know, when we respond to God, when we follow God, definitely there will be troubles. There will be struggles. Amen? Because we are also humans. Ang angat na dito tayo sa mundo ng ibabaw. As we follow God, there will be struggles. Why? Because the enemy will also work hard to stop you. The enemy will try his best to stop you to reach yung promise ng pagnon. Because the enemy doesn't want you to be blessed. The enemy doesn't want you to possess your inheritance. The enemy doesn't want you to be promoted. So that's why there will be many struggles. But when we learn to persist, to follow God, to trust in His words, to depend on His words, to depend on the ability of God and just respond and follow, point to is we will experience God's kindness in every step. We will experience God's kindness in every step. And we see that in Joshua chapter 2. Now, when they arrive, the place, they actually arrive where? Sa isa pong prostitution din. Sa isang casa. Sa isang, anong tawag natin ngayon doon? Isang bar. <laughs> isang club. <laughs> diba? And they arrive in this place. Because, you know, ito lang yung lugar na hindi sila siguro mapag... Ano yun? Oo. Ano? Mapaghihinalaan. Because they are righteous people of God. They believe that Israelites are holy people. Righteous people. Would you, would you expect them to go on a bar? So they went into this place. But then when they came and arrived in the place of Jericho, they were being discovered. Yeah? They were being discovered. Verse 2, the king of Jericho was told, Look, some of the Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land. And so they went to the place ni Rahab. Okay? Ni Rahab. Pagdating at pagdating na pa lang doon, ay alam na nila yung plano ng mga Israelites. Bakit kaya? Because you know, Israelites are small people. Pag ikaw dumating ka sa lugar ng mga giant, syempre alam nila, hindi to taga dito. <laughs> hindi to taga dito. And you would know, iba yung mga fashion statement nila noon, di ba? That the Israelites have been using They're old fashioned for 40 years. Their clothes did not wear out, remember? They've been using their clothes for 40 years. So makikita mo, ay, taga, parang sa atin, taga-probinsya to. <laughs> Di ba? Alam na natin agad. So this is how, that's why they cannot really hide. No matter how they try to hide, makikita at makikita sila. So dito, this is one of the great struggle that they have. It really means life and death for them. It really means Magpupush through ba yung plan to possess the land or not? It depends on the two spies. Nagdedepende po yung success at victory, yung possession ng promise through these two spies. Kung sila po ay nahuli, wala na. But look, look at, look at how God walked with them. Look at how God's salvation was with them. You look how the favor of God was with them. Okay? First thing is that They, God brought them, even in a foreign land, they were brought in the right person. God brought a person who could really protect them and help them. 
At saan po sila dinala ng Panginoon? Kay Rahab. A Rahab na isang prostitute. You would imagine how God will use this person. And they were? They were brought in where? In the right place. They were led by God in the right place. This is how God led His people. They were brought in this unusual, unexpected, unsuspecting place. Don't discover pa rin sila. But this place became a place of refuge. In this unexpected place, God used it as a safe refuge for them. Kaya dito makita natin, verse 4, nung hinanap na po nung king ang mga Israelites, look at how Rahab spoke. But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. You know, once they received them, once ni receive po ng ni Rahab ang mga taong ito, he took them under her wings. He took them under her refuge and he had hidden them. She had hidden them. And you see how God used this person, how God spoke to Rahab. Hindi ko alam kung kilala niya ang mga taong ito. But he was moved to hide them. And sabi niya dito, yes, the men came to me, but I didn't know where. And then sabi niya, nakaalis na po sila. Nakaalis na sila. Try niyo silang habulin, baka maabutan niyo pa sila. So winala niya pa po yung mga naghahanap sa kanila. And this is how God used this place. How God used this woman for the sake of His people. He even raised up a prostitute to be a savior. For them, in an unexpected place, in an unexpected person, God can use them. God can touch their hearts for you to bless you, to protect you, to give you favors. And this is how God will be with us when we learn to follow Him. Minsan dumarating po tayo sa point ng life natin that we are not into this place. We're not used to this place. It's a foreign place for us. But as long as God called us there, as long as God called you to be on that place, the presence of God will be with you. The, the, he will guide you, He will lead you, and definitely He will protect you. And doon nga natin makikita as you continue to read, verse 6, in that very perfect time, God brought the two spies doon po sa bahay ni Rahab. That's why they were able to be hidden. Back it. Verse 6, But she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them from under the stalks of flax she had laid out on the roof. Alam nyo mga bahay nun, hindi pa ganun kalakihan. No? So, in, impossible yung hindi makita itsura, kuti, sugur sunog na sunog ang mga Israel noon eh. Because they have to go to the wilderness. It's not easy to hide them. Pero thank God, during that time, on that very time, was the barley harvest. And during the barley harvest, they also harvest the flax. Yung flax po, isa po siyang mga uh, material, they use it as herb, as food. At buti na lang po, during that time, anihan. At pag anihan, they put the flax on the roof. Okay? Kaya dun po sila itinago. Dun sila tinago sa taas ng roof. Kaya hindi po sila nakita. So what a timing na during that time, meron pong nakalatag na mga flax at dun po sila nakapagtago. Kung hindi, ay mahuli talaga sila. So every time the Lord put things together to make way for His people in this promised land because He honored the faith he honored the obedience sa mga taong ito. Kahit alam ng mga taong ito, even if the spy has fear, even if the spy knows the threat and the death that is waiting for them on that place, still they learn to trust God. They learn to obey the words of their leader. They learn to obey the words of God. That's why God was with them. God is with them. And that's the greatest thing. It is God who sustained them. It is God na siya pong nag-protect sa kanila. That's why they were able to do their work. That's why they were able to be spared from death. 
So matindi po yung pabor ng Panginoon sa mga sumusunod sa Kanya. When we learn to follow God, yes, there will be troubles. There will be difficulties. There will be challenges. Sometimes you also have to fight against yourself, against your fear, against your low self-esteem, against your, your, your everything. And sometimes it's easy for Christians to quit and not to go on. It's easy for us, sige, yung iba na lang. That's why others receive the prize. Others receive the promise then. But for us, if we will not follow in faith, if we will not persist to follow, we will not experience God. We will not experience the kindness of God. Look at this. Dito natin makikita, why would a foreigner embrace you? Actually, Rahab knows that they are Israelites. Actually, Rahab knows they are spies. Actually, Rahab knows they are about na mapapasok na mga Israelites. They know. He, she knows. But look at the kindness of God through the kindness of Rahab. Isang prostitute can give grace can accept, can protect, and he has the kindness to these people na, alam mo yun, kahit po buong pamilya niya are as, it's at stake. Buong nation is at stake sa kanyang kindness sa mga taong ito. But he was willing to give the kindness and this is the kindness of God. The kindness of God that even foreigners can bless you. Foreigners, can protect you and embrace you. At dito po natin makikita that in verse 8, before the spies lay down for the night, she went up on the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear of you has fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and that what you did on Sihon and Og, the two kings of the Amorites. And there when we heard about it, our hearts melted. Our hearts melted. You see that even Rahab followed God. Even Rahab knew God. Even Rahab Kahit po feeling niya, Naku, pag ito, I will take them under my refuge. They will, someday, they will kill us. They will take our place. They will take this land. But Rahab also, touched by God, knew God. He followed God. He learned to follow God. And he was so courageous. Kahit po sana, you know, he, she will also be fearful. Bakit? These are not your people. At alam mo, they are here to take your kingdom. But Rahab also followed God. And how did they experience? You know, the grace of God was with them all throughout the time. The Israelites can also kill Rahab. Pwede po yung mga Israelites, they will, they will not be protected by Rahab. But because both of them followed, they followed God, they followed the word of God, they knew God, and they are willing to lay down everything, even their own reasoning. Kung tayo po si Rahab, would we trust these people? Definitely no. Yeah? But because Rahab trusts their God, he trusted them. And he learned to follow God by protecting them and leading them. Even yung escape plan, siya po ang gumawa. And that is how we see that even in danger, these people, the two spies and Rahab, they still choose to follow God. But even on the point of trouble in the time of danger, because they choose to follow God, God's hands were with them. God's protection was with them. And we see the kindness of God in every step of the way. It is not about 
whether this place will be a blessing. We think like this place is a good place or not. But one thing as Christians that we need to ask when we do something, is this the heart of God? Is this the heart of God? Is, there, is this where God is leading us? Now, sabi nila sa akin noon, now, someone asked me pala, ate, bakit ka nag full-time? Eh, ako napatanong din ako, and I just realized that, you know, I really want to be a nurse, but if God called me to another place, I have to respond. Because that's where the blessing is. Even if I think that parang impossible, parang hindi ko kayang gawin yun. No, kahit feeling natin, ayaw natin gawin yun. But because it is God who called you in that place, surely the blessings will be there. Minsan tinatawag na tayo ng Painon, minsan hindi sa lugar na kaaya-aya. Hindi sa lugar na madadalian tayo lahat. Now when God calls you into some place, there will be struggles. May mga challenges. But it doesn't mean na hindi po yun para sa yon. May struggle kasi ati hindi ata para sa akin yun. No, you need to discern. You need to know if it's from God. Then you need to be on that place. You need to fight for your possession. You need to do your best and follow God all throughout that place. And once we learn to be followers of God, we will experience the grace of God every step. We will experience the kindness of God, even kindness and favor from men. Your favors from your companies. Favors to the people na mamimit po natin. Like these people. Like these spies. Because they follow the word of God. And once they follow the word of God, they receive salvation. And that is the third point. In verse 15, they receive salvation. Now, as we see here, sabi po dito, now then in verse 12, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them, and that you will save us from death. And how did the spies respond? Our lives for your lives, the men assured her, if you don't tell what we are doing, we will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us the land. Kindness is being give, responded with kindness. When Rahab gave kindness to the spies, the spies also gave kindness Kai Rahab. Amen? And this is what we will experience. And when they learn to give kindness to one another, because this is the heart of God, they experience salvation. In verse 15, so, let, so she let them down by a rope through the window, for the house she lived in was part of the city wall. Now because of Rahab, na deliver po ang mga Israelites, yung dalawang spy from danger. They were able to get out from danger because God was with them. So the salvation of God was with them. Amen? Kung atin pong titingnan lahat, it is very imaginable that they will escape this place because it's a fortified city. But thank God, yung bahay na kinalagyan po nila, yung bahay ni Rahab, was part of the city wall. Alam niyo po yung city wall? Yung pader ng, ng syudad, doon po siya nagbahay. So binutasan niya na lang yung wall. So this is how strategic yung bahay ni Rahab. So that the spies do not have to go through the gates because the gates were being shut. But the window, the small opening, God made a way out for them. Because they learn to follow God. When we learn to follow God in our lives, no matter how difficult it will be, the journey, kahit po ganun ka bako-bako ang journey natin, minsan dumarating po tayo sa point na parang impossible na, but God will devise a way out. 
mag, magbubukas ang Painoon para sa atin. And that we see that they received salvation, they've been saved. And this is the great salvation that we can experience when we learn to follow God. When God asks us to do something and we learn to follow Him, we will experience Him more and more. Kaya po, I believe, kung sino man ang may pinakamalaking pananampalataya nung nag-cross ang lahat sa Jordan River, it was the two spies. Because they first experienced. Bago pa yung great salvation to cross the Jordan and to get Jericho, the two spies already experienced God's salvation. Their experience in every salvation, in every step of the way, almost they will be, they are being caught. But God delivered them. And this is how God will be with us, can save us in everything. No matter how the enemy will try to trap us, no matter how the enemy will work in our lives, anumang danger, anuman po ang dadalhin ng kaaway sa atin along our journey, if we follow God with faith, we will experience salvation. And because the two spies are being saved, the whole Israelites were able to experience God's salvation. And they were able to cross the Jordan River. They were able to cross the land. Amen? Because of the obedience, because these two spies followed God. And not just only that, even Rahab was being saved. See, Rahab, if he did not look at God, if he did not follow God, if he did not believe in the God of Israel, sabi niya dito, I know that the Lord has given you this land. And this God is the God of all gods. Rahab believed in the God of Israel. That's why he was, she was being saved. Hindi lang po siya. If we continue to read the whole book of Joshua, we will discover that Rahab and the whole family were being saved. All the people of Jericho were killed except Rahab, the prostitute, and the whole clan, the whole family. And this is how awesome and how great life will be when we learn to follow the God of Israel. When we learn to follow Jesus in our lives, He will always reward us. He will reward us with safety, with protection and salvation and also the possession, the inheritance. And the thing is, did you know that also Rahab, hindi lang po dito nagtatapos ang pangalang Rahab, because he learned to believe and embrace God, the God of Israel, and be part of of the mission na mga Israelite, God honored him. How? God changed her destiny. God changed her destiny from a prostitute woman. She became honorable because she became the wife of a prince, prince ng Judah. That's why King David came from Rahab. Look at how honored the fate of those people who can follow him, who will obey him. He changed po ang destiny ni Rahab. Siguro si Rahab nakakahiya ang buhay niya. She had a very low life. Hindi po maipagmamalaki ang kanyang trabaho. Siguro pati pamilya niya ayaw siya. Itanatwa siya ng, ng, ng paligid ng public. She may be untouchable, rejected by the society. But because Rahab learned to follow God, because Rahab learned to follow God despite the fear, God lifted the life of Rahab up. He lifted her up from the pit ng kanyang life, her lowly life, and she made her an honorable woman and came from her are the Kings, the lineage of the royal clan of David, that even Jesus came from Rahab. And this is how God will bless us. This is how God can change our lives when we learn to follow Him. We will receive salvation. 
Salvation from the threat of this world. Salvation from the difficulties of this world. And not just us, but the whole family. So that the whole family of Rahab was saved. And that's why today we can also experience salvation. Why? Because through Rahab, Jesus was born here on earth. Through this woman of faith that we see in Hebrews. When we look in Hebrews 11 verse 31, God honored Abraham. God honored the faith of Rahab together with Abraham. Nakita niyo yung hall of faith sa Hebrews? God spoke about Moses. God spoke about the faith of Abraham. But there is this one woman. God honored her faith. It is Rahab. He's not even an Israel. He's not an Israelite. But look at how God honors you when you follow Him. No matter where you came from, no matter what kind of life you have in the past, even today, God can turn things around in your life. Because it's not about the place where we go. It's about the presence of God. When we follow God, definitely His presence is with us. But when we choose our own way, when we decide and choose our own choices in lives, out of our flesh, out of the pressures of the world, definitely God will not be with us. But look at Rahab. He did not know about the Ten Commandments. He did not know and hear from God like the Israelites. But he followed God. He followed the God of Israel. And so that's why God touched her life. God wants us to remember her. God wants us to learn from her that when you follow Him, God will change things in your life. God's kindness will be with you. His kindness will always be in every step of the way. And so, ano po yung kindness ng Panginoon doon sa buhay ni, ni Rahab? He let the scarlet thread. Sabi po niya, yung, yung, yung dalawang spy at si Rahab, you have to tie the scarlet thread. And, there, and then we will only know that you are Rahab. And your whole house on that place will be saved. And do you know what does the scarlet thread signifies today? It is the blood of Jesus. It is the blood of Jesus that saves us. It is the Jesus that came from the very bosom of Rahab. That's why Jesus and God remembered this woman. Because of this woman following God by her faith. Would you trust the spy? Sinabi niya, oh basta ha, save mo kami. Would you trust these people? The spy would he, would they trust Rahab? Would they believe that Rahab will not tell about the plan? But this is God moving. Do you see God's presence when they talk together? When they respond together? God's presence was even in that very unusual place. To just deliver His people. To deliver the whole house of Rahab. Because this woman knows God. He followed God. The same is true in our lives today. Brothers and sisters, we need to follow God. No matter what is our circumstance right now in this time of pandemic, we need to follow Him. Obey His words. Even if the world does not. You know, when I was being called as a full-time minister, I just graduated. I just finished my board exam as a nurse. And this has been a long time dream for me. When I was still in kindergarten, I really dreamt to become a nurse. And finally, God gave it and granted this dream. But after a year of my graduation, I, I passed the board. God called me for the full-time ministry. But it was not an easy path to take. I did not say yes immediately. Because as a pastor's kid, I knew. I knew. I 
I experienced the journey of a pastor's kid's life. I saw the struggle of my dad. I saw how he followed God. They have to go through rivers. Yeah. Rivers of Cagayan. And then yung speaker nasa ulo-ulo namin. Then my father has to carry me on her shoulder. Tapos yung speaker, hawakan niya sa, ip- sa kamay. So ta- alam mo yun, kailangan nilang mag-cross ng river. Wala pang bangka po noon. And this is how the experience of my dad to go on missions. So that the word and the gospel will be preached. He was called. He was also called from the marketplace. He's been earning good. But he followed. And I saw how the family also experienced a lot of struggle when my dad also followed God. Yung tipong nabubuhay kami ng sang sardinas, yung sang sardinas po igigisa, tapos ilalagay sa isang malaking kawali, siliasi, padamiin ng tubig. And then, you know, kakain na. We are seven siblings. Imagine, five boys and two girls. And then on top of that, the workers in the church are in our house. Okay, kain na. So mga, mga, mga 20, 30 people kakain doon, doon sa isang sardinas na pinasabaw. And there's a lot of things. We cannot even come to church noon kasi dapat alternate kami kasi pito kami magkakabatid. My parents cannot afford to send us to school. Dumating sa point na kailangan namin mag lots para lang makapag-aral lang isa pag-stop ang nakuha mo. Sorry ka. So, that was one of the heartbreaking time in my life. Yung tipong wala yung nanay mo, you have to grow up without your mom because your mom has to go abroad so he, she can support the family and the needs of the ministry. And your dad will not always be at home. So, nung bata ako, I tend to curse God hate God, hate the church, hate the ministry. But I just thank God that He caught me once again and brought me back to Him. And I began to serve Him. But not yet full-time. Nung tinawag po ako ng Painon ng full-time, nag-flashback po lahat ito sa akin. And I just remembered, maybe Joshua was like this. Nag-flashback yung time nung halos patayin nila si Moses whenever Moses does the will of God. Yung time na people has to murmur kasi gutom lahat sila. Nag-flashback yun. That's why he was very fearful. And me too, I was very fearful. It was, I was praying to God, Lord, I don't want to experience the old time. Kaya nga ako nangarap maging nurse kasi gusto ko mag-abroad. That was my mindset. I just want to be rich. Maybe I can just support yung ministry ng papa ko. Grabe po yung call, the call of God. The, that's my turning point in my life. That's where I realize, you know, pag magna-nursing ba ako at hindi yun ang perfect will ng Painon, what would my life be? What would my life be? And so I decided to follow God. It's not an easy decision to make. But I did it anyway. And I see God's hand move in my life every moment. Every day I live by His grace. Every moment I see the kindness of God in my life. I see how He He provided for me. I see how He promoted my ministry. I was just a youth pastor before that I can pastor in, in Metro Manila. Who would imagine Na, nabuhay din po ako but when, when I followed also God in the full time was not an easy time dumating din po ako sa point that when I started the Metro Manila mission I survived with just a hot dog sandwich sa 7-Eleven once a day I eat that those were my first year in the ministry I eat one is 7-Eleven that's why I, whenever I see 7-Eleven I always see God Kasi yung hotdog po lang yung sandwich nila, yun yung pagkain ko, isang ganun sa buong araw. And I have to go sa Luneta Park and start to lead the group of people. I started the ministry on alone. 
Mag-isa ko po nun. Rain or shine, kailangan mo mag-antay kung may darating. That's how we started here in Manila. Walang roof. There's so much struggle. Kailangan namin mag-trend. Kasi from Tagig kami, pupunta kaming Luneta Park, matindi. Ilang, ilang sakayan po yun. At that time, hindi, I cannot even provide for myself. I was even working for a work that is a commission basis. Sometimes I don't have salary for one month, but I have to come and meet these people in the park, even if no one will arrive. And it was a struggle. And I have a lot of things in my head. And people tell me, you will not prosper. Ano ba yan? Nagpasor-pasor ka? Nag-nurse-nurse ka pa? That's how I always hear. When I go home, you know, when people say, ano yung work mo? Ah, nurse ka pala dati. Ba't ka pa nag-nurse? Nag-nurse-nurse ka pa? Nagpasor ka din lang naman? That is how they say. And they will always, you know, ask me to go back. And that was the struggle. And dumarating din po ako sa point that I want to give up. Lord, tinawag mo ba ako dito? If you called me in this, let me experience your presence. Let me experience your presence. Walk with me. Help me. Eh ngayon makita nyo naman, hindi ako pumayat. Never. Hindi ako pinabayaan ng Panginoon. Sabi ka na, ah, nabuhay ka sa isang sandwich, hindi namin napansin. Because God's strength was with me. God's provision was with me. And now look at us. Yung dating sa may park lang po tayo, walang roof, now we are in Goodwill Building in Makati. This is amazing. This is something that I always thank God. And now I'm not just no longer living sa squatter. We are staying in a condominium. Yeah? Ngayon, hindi na kami pandelakad. We have our car. And this is all. I did not buy all these things. <laughs> Wala pong galing po sa akin dito. But this is all God's grace and kindness ng Painon. And most especially, I have Joel with me in the full time now. I'm not alone. Before, I was very lonely. And now, I have Joel. I have the, my disciples. That's why nakita ko, this is God's, all God's grace, all God's kindness. When we just learn to follow, now God is making things easier for me. It was not an easy path, but God has a way out for those who follow Him. And He promotes us, He will lift us up, and He will, most of all, He will enlarge our faith. That's why at the end, sabi po nung dalawang ispay, Leader Joshua. They said to Joshua in verse 24, The Lord has surely given the whole land into our hands. All the people are melting in fear because of us. It's a new thing. It's a different thing from the 12 spies. They brought a different news. They, their faith is stronger. Their faith is larger. When we learn to follow God, we will experience God along the way. And you will see His grace, His mercy, promotion will come. And most of all, your faith. You get to know God more. You get to see His hands working more. At mas lalo mo pong makikita, oh, nga no, I just have to follow God, not my own strength. Like Rahab, no matter where we are right now, you see, I was living a very lowly life. I came from a very, very poor family. But God used me. God take me out from that place and He used me. And I experienced His salvation. And Rahab, same with Rahab. From her lowly life, God can turn it around. So like each one of you here, we may think like we are just an ordinary people. We came from province. We have a very small dream. But today, God is saying to you, God will use you. God will raise you up mightily, mightily. Because you learn to follow Him. Not on your own ability. Not on your own strength. 
but you will see God's kindness everywhere to give you the favor and the grace. Today, let us respond and let us all stand. Let us enter into Joshua chapter 2. I receive mine portion. What's your journey? What kind of journey do you want to experience? Today, the Lord says as you follow Him, He will be with you. He will be with you. He will be with you. Just like Joshua, when we learn to follow God, all things will be added unto us. Our heart's desire, He will give it to us. Our very struggle, He will help us to overcome it. When we learn to follow Him, obey His words. To follow Him is to obey His words. Even in this time of pandemic, whatever kind of difficulty we are in, know that you are a child of God. Know that as you follow Him continually, no matter what kind of circumstance you are in, his hands will be with you. His salvation will be with you. Jesus, we thank you, Jesus. Today, let's just enter in Joshua chapter 2 as we sing the song. Lord, we thank you that we know that you are the God who is faithful. You are the God who chose us. You are the God who will lay the road for us. You are the God who will prepare things for us, Lord, that as we follow you, God, your presence will be with us and allow us, Lord, to experience salvation in every step of the way. Father, we just want to thank you for this. Brothers and sisters today, there may be things that hinders us we want to follow God we want to say yes to God but there are things like Joshua that we have to go through there are things that we need to overcome there are rivers that we need to cross there are fears within us maybe God is, is calling you to do the right thing in your life maybe ask us to forgive even if we don't want to Maybe God wants us to overcome every struggle, every sin, every addiction that we have so we can follow God. Maybe you want to read and follow His words. You want to, to meditate on the Word of God, but you can't. But today is a time that we lay it all down to God and say, Lord, we just want to follow you. And we open your heart, open your mouth, whatever are the rivers, whatever are the things that keep us away, not to following God faithfully, wholeheartedly, our own principles, the principles of the world, our flesh. When God asks us to do something for Him, sometimes it's not easy for us to do it. It's not easy for our faith. Today, let us learn from Rahab. Learn from the spies on how they trusted God, how they follow.
God and how they lay down everything to follow the Lord. The Lord says those who will follow me, His presence will be with us. His favors will be with us. Today you can pray for yourself. You can pray for yourself. And may you respond. Be able to respond in the Spirit. Respond in God. Lord, I pray that you reveal unto them. Holy Spirit, may you help them see it. May you help them realize it. Father, may you take away all these fears. Take away the doubts. Take away the unbelief. The Lord, I can prosper. Take away, Lord, all the fears that I cannot do it. I cannot make it. This is only where I can reach. This is the dead end for me. Lord, all these things, God. Lord, I pray that you speak to their hearts right now. Help them to believe. Help them to believe. Help them to receive your word. Receive your spirit. The spirit of faith. To follow you. Maybe even as cell leaders, you doubt your abilities. You cannot, Lord, I cannot bring my cell group with me. Lord, in my own ability, I cannot. I am incapable. Lord, would you help me? Help me. Help me that I can bring salvation to these people. Help me, Lord. Lord, even in our workplace, God, I have a lot of fear. I have a lot of fear, but Lord, I know that you are my salvation. You will protect us. You will protect us. Cover us. Yes, even in this time of pandemic, God, we know that salvation is with us. Lord, as we follow you, as we continue to obey your word, yes, your salvation is upon us. Even, Lord, if we see ourselves, Lord, in the midst, of the principles of the world na minsan Panginoon hindi po namin alam kung paano kumawala na minsan Panginoon inaalon na lamang kami and we don't know how to rise up as your believers as your followers but we follow the world we follow the world and the ways of the world but Lord God today we pray we pray that may you open our eyes and help us to see that we may follow you Help us to receive your word in courage, with courage and boldness. Like Joshua, like Joshua, we can respond to you, Lord. Give us a heart that is willing to obey and trust you with all our hearts. Whatever it takes, even there is danger ahead of us. Even there is, Lord, a rough road along the way. Father, we choose to look at you. We choose God to follow you. We choose you, Lord, for we know your kindness is with us. And we see it at this very moment. Your kindness has been with your church. How you have been protecting us. How you have healed us. How you have protected our works. How you have promoted us, God, even in this time of pandemic. Father, we thank you. How we have our health, our lives. God, this is all your grace. This is all your kindness. We thank you. And help us to respond in your kindness. Help us to respond in your kindness. Now the word of God says, we need to rise up rise up and to take hold of the possession and the promise of God and along the journey the Lord says no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your lives as I was with Moses so I will be with you I will never leave you nor forsake you this is the word of God for us 
For those who follow him, his presence will be with them. And no one can go against us. No one can go against us if we choose to follow him. Today, let's just pray for ourselves right now. To fully commit ourselves to God. Now for our brothers and sisters watching online. If you have not known Jesus yet in your life. The word of God says salvation only comes through him. And those who follow him like Rahab can experience salvation. They can experience change in their lives. God can change your destiny. You may have been in a difficult life right now. In the loneliest part of your life, God can take you away from it only if you believe. Today, I want to lead you in prayer to receive Jesus. And you can commit yourself to Him. Even for those who are, who have already received Jesus, you can recommit yourself. We just pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. That you are the God who saves. That through your son Jesus, you bring safety upon us. And you bring salvation upon me and my family. Lord, I want to receive your son Jesus. That he will become my Lord and my Savior. That I can live the life that he has given to me. Lord, I pray that may you take me out from the lowly life that I'm living in change me change the way I live Lord I pray for your blessings to come upon me that God beginning today I can follow you in every step of the way Lord I pray that I will experience your kindness Lord I thank you I thank you Lord I just pray right now for those who receive you I pray that God may you honor their faith as they desire to follow you. God, as they made you their Lord and their Savior. Lord, I pray that you will truly reign in their hearts. That they will continue to obey you. Not even themselves. Not even what their hearts will tell them. But they will obey what you will tell them to do. You will become the Lord. You will be the one God who will they will be following in their lives when we know that your ways are higher than our ways and your path is a path of blessing lord in the name of jesus i release faith upon them that god they will see it through their faith they will overcome their fears they will overcome their troubles in their life and like rahab they can trust you depend on you fully give their lives on you god and that father they will experience your saving grace. Lord, they will experience and even their family, even in their workplaces. Lord, they will see you and experience your love, your healing, Father, upon them. That God, in everything that they do, in every choice and decision that they will make, Lord, they will choose your path. They will choose your ways, Father, because it's a way of blessing. Father, I bless them right now. And God, even the whole week and all the days of their lives, may your presence be with them. And God, may you give them your word. That as they follow your word, they will continue to believe in you in faith. And that God, they will be victorious in everything that they do. Father, I bless them and I bless everyone at home right now. May your favors be upon us. Protect us in this time of crisis. And we continue to declare, Father, that you will reign. They will be experiencing breakthrough as we follow you in this time of crisis, in this time of pandemic. Father, you will make a way for your people and you will give us success. You will give us blessings and favors along the way. Father, we thank you. Be glorified, be magnified. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. So together we follow God. Amen. And let's just celebrate the goodness of God.